I'm Lori Tebby from the Southern Tier Lime Support Incorporated, and this is Dave Macy. We go around to outreach events, and uh, we talk about prevention, our support group, and how we help people treat this disease. Hi, I'm Brian Robarge. I'm a certified rolfer and I'm also the CEO of Ithaca Cannabis CBD products. We're uh, right out of Ithaca here. Our products, different concentrations. We have a 300, a 600, a 900, and an 1800. Our products have been helping a lot of people with a lot of conditions, a lot of problems. We're getting great feedback. My name's Yardley Burgess. I am the owner of Empire CBD. We sell some of the finest CBD oils that we can find. We have both full spectrum and then we also have an isolate product which is completely THC free. So my name is Christopher Terry. I'm the owner of Finger Lakes Cannabis. You can find us online at flxcbd.com. Locally produce CBD product. The endocannabinoid system in the body and there are two types of receptor receptors, the CB1 and CB2. There's THC which is directly from marijuana. Um, that is CB1 receptors. Uh, CB2 as well, but mostly CB1, so you're going to get the psychoactive effects. Then there's the CBD oil. That can be derived from hemp, and it mostly does not have any THC in it. It's cannabidiol. Hey, I'm Jules, and I've got three Cedars Farmstead up in Candor. I really just want to help and serve people. Take control of your time, steward your finances, tune into your intuition, balance your mind, and calm your emotions. Teaching Ithaca Wellness. I'm Jules, and I've got three Cedars Farmstead up in Candor. I really just want to help and serve people. We've got a Facebook page. Do not have a regular web page because I don't put my energy there. I put my energy into what I do. I got to start with kind of where, wow, I fell into it, which is I had a friend who sold oils and I was kind of interested. I took a couple oils and then I went and I hurt my knee and I ended up home and was having a really hard time with moods and everything. And she said, let me come over and we'll play. We helped my mood and days go from really down to back to normal. And the other piece was I was dealing with pain medications and we put it on my back, just a couple drops, and everything just went <sighs> gone. All the symptoms were gone. And it's just been really amazing. And then I found, this comp found out about this company and what I love is that they are ethically amazing. And their oils test pure every single time. And they're using them in hospitals. And I like that it's an adjunctive therapy, so you can use it with massage. You can use it and just have it diffused in the air. You could bring it into the hospitals. If you put it on reflexology points, it, it does all kinds of really neat things. And what's, amazing, what's nice is that they're using the whole plant and they're harvesting sustainably. I do some energy work along with them, so that's why I'm offering like hand massages today. So I have people check them out and see what resonates for them. I kind of facilitate them finding their way through and find something that works so they don't have to be broke, so they don't have to rely on the healthcare system. And they can really be more in charge of what they're doing. I emphasize the ethical piece a lot because that's really important to me. Diffuser, because a lot of times people get oils, they don't know where to get a diffuser. And this one's silent, so it's one of my favorite ones, you know. And then we've got another sale on a bunch of kits, so I've got that out. And there's drawings for this and information. If you, want, if you wanted information, I had a gal by who wanted information on diabetes. And I don't have a lot of information on that, but I'll get it for her. We've got body butter out and a few of my favorite blends out for people to try. And we've just got some events that are coming up. And I also will tailor any event. If anyone wants an event, I will tailor it to whatever you're looking towards. So if say a bunch of massage therapists wanted to know what oils to use for a couple different things so they could have them for their practice, can bring and tailor oils to that. I've got a pretty strong medical background, so 
I'm good at applying these things to medical issues and I really read through a lot of medical articles. I don't use articles from essential oil companies. I read through stuff that's independent, really solid information on those. And yeah, you can kind of see, it's just a display of different products that they have and then there's a sniffer spot where you can check out all the different smells. And I'm giving out hand massages. So we've got a little spot over here for that. Oh, sure, yes, I love my farm. We have a gigantic porch that you could sit on and the view goes for literally for miles and miles. And the first time I got to walk up to the back of my field, I just kind of stood there and I looked out and I all I could think of was, this isn't mine. I don't, how do you own something like that? And how can I share it with as many people as possible? So that's kind of what we're trying to do. I say to people, if you just need to come and sit on a porch and have a cup of tea, feel free. If you want to have a workshop here, we've got spaces. If you want to come and be a part of the community, because we're making it a cooperative farmstead, uh, we've got space for that too. We'd love to see tiny houses go up where people come live in the farmhouse and, you know, they may pick a spot and say, hey, I want to do some swales or some mushroom growing or whatever. We've got space for it and we want people to be able to do those things. So kind of, that's kind of our, our mission. And if you just need to come get your hands dirty, we've got plenty of weed. expert but I can give you what a uh, little surface level understanding that I have of it. Um, basically yes it does act on the endocannabinoid system in the body and there are two types of receptor receptors the CB1 and the CB2. Um, the CB1 is uh, related to the psychoactive effect and the CB2 receptors are all over the body and they're connected to all the other systems of the body. There's THC which is directly from marijuana um, that is CB1 receptors, uh, CB2 as well, but mostly CB1. Then there's the CBD oil, um, and that is can be derived from hemp, and it mostly does not have any THC in it. It's mostly the cannabidiol, and that's going to act on the CB2 receptors. However, not directly. It goes into your body, and there's a chain of events that occur, and eventually acts on the CB2 receptors. Um, and then there is beta carophylline, and that is what is in copaiba. And it's in other oils as well, like black pepper, uh, pink pepper, ilang ilang, various other essential oils, but it's in a very high percentage of um, copaiba. Beta carophylline acts directly on the CB2 receptors. So when it's introduced into the body, it's going to go directly and, and immediately affect those receptors and have the positive effects that you're looking for. The benefits of the copaiba itself that, that I've learned and it's related to like cardiovascular health, um, anything with the, the nervous system. This is the uh, peppermint and, and they also do the on guard. All of the oils go through t at least 212 degrees yeah. for an extended period of time because they're mm -hmm. distilled by steam. Right. So if you're staying under that, nothing is going to happen to them. Mm -hmm. um, the beneficial, the therapeutic benefits may be affected right. by long-term mm -hmm. higher heat. Do you want to do some more smell? Um, but I, I don't think I don't okay. think that when you're using essential oils for cooking that you're intending it right. to be therapeutic. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. about the absolute it's yumminess. Hi, I'm Erica Spencer. I'm an acupuncturist, and I treat emotional and physical pain through esoteric acupuncture. A lot of patients need some sort of relief outside of the treatment room and they don't want to use a lot of chemicals. A, a lot of the stuff that the physical therapist is suggesting have a lot of chemicals in them. So I've been incorporating CBD salve, which is, you know, very natural stuff is in here. Uh, menthol, camphor. This is actually kind of controversial, mm -hmm. so I try not to advertise for this. I just use it in the, in the treatment room and I sell it out there. Having somebody like me here is really helping bring light to the area again. My name's Yardley Burgess. I am the owner of Empire CBD. We sell some of the finest CBD oils that we can find. We have both full spectrum and then we also have an isolate product which is completely THC free. So those are our main products. We have different versions of those, edibles, vapables, subling 
uh, topicals. Yeah, CBD works because we all have an endocannabinoid system. When you introduce endocannabinoids, which is CBD, into the system, and then it, it helps with inflammation, it helps fight antibacterial, it can help with cell production, it, it can do so many different things. It's just a wonderful product for overall health and healing. It's all natural, so it's a great natural alternative. When I was 18 years old, I was in the military. I was diagnosed with uh, colon cancer. They found I had lymphoma. Then about four years ago, gastric cancer. So I've lost both my stomach and my colon. I've had crazy amounts of anxiety my whole life. My I had chronic pain that I couldn't do anything about because I didn't have a stomach or a colon, so I wasn't able to take anything for the relief. I started taking CBD about 13 months ago. I I'm now off of anxiety medication after 16 years of being on it. My pain has gone from an 8 to a 1. What's left of my GI tract uh, actually is free of polyps for the first time in my life and the inflammation has subsided. My personal favorite and my strongest suggestion for anybody looking for relief from CBD would be to try a full spectrum sublingual tincture to get the most bioavailability of CBD products and it really helps with the most different things throughout the system. Hi, I'm Ryan Robards. I'm a certified rolfer. I'm also the CEO of Ithaca Cannabis CBD products. We're uh, right out of Ithaca here. Our products, different concentrations. We have a 300, a 600, a 900, and an 1800. Our products have been helping a lot of people with a lot of conditions, a lot of problems. We're getting great feedback. We sell this a lot out of our practice to a lot of our clients who have all kinds of issues they come in to see us about. And, Everyone's raving about all their great results. And my wife takes it for uh, multiple sclerosis. That's how we got into the business. It's helped her immensely. I started taking it too. It helped me with stress and anxiety, excellent sleep. Our daughter helps out. She does a lot of the graphics. This is Khalil. We're hoping to be carried at our own store, hopefully soon. We're looking for a brick and mortar right now in, in Ithaca. And we're also uh, probably be carried at Green Star, hopefully soon. But we're in a professional building down by the Commons at 108 South Albany Street. We just did the state fair. That was pretty awesome. Meeting thousands of people with all kinds of conditions and giving out free samples. And probably my favorite point of that was helping out a fellow with Parkinson's who was shaking like a leaf. He tried our 1800 and started smoothing out while he was talking to me. And I said, are you smoothing out? And he goes, I don't know, I'll have to get back to you. It comes in waves, so he goes, I'm going to walk around for a little bit. And he came back about 45 minutes later and said, yeah, it's absolutely, it goes, I feel amazing. And little things like that make this it's all this worth it. We love the business. And we emphasize on hemp history. We like to talk to people about that. Say this flag here, this is uh, the 13 star flag. George Washington was the only president that served under that. He was an enormous hemp farmer. The flags back then were made out of hemp. The ropes, all the sails. Uh, the Constitution itself was written on hemp paper until about 80 years ago when they made it illegal. But CBD carries all, you know, almost all the health benefits. You can add THC to CBD too to help with other benefits, but that's not legal for us to do yet. We're expecting that to probably change in about a year. Um, but for now, you know, CBD is an amazing product by itself. Myself, for instance, I probably would have uh, what they call agoraphobia right now. It's talking to people through microphones and around you know, public speaking. Uh, usually my palms will be sweating if you look into their bone dry. Sleep aid in itself, it doesn't like knock you out, but when you go to sleep, you wake up in the morning. You don't wake up every time you turn over. We get our CBD compound right now from a company called Pure Kind Botanicals out of Colorado. They're one of the number one companies in Colorado, carried by all the Lucky Smarts out there. Uh, Lucky Smart is kind of like Green Star, but they're all over Colorado. Um, they can carry anybody they want because they're high end and they choose pure kind. Um, and that's who we get our CBD from. We're looking to work with local farmers. Well, all the farms around New York State and small farmers, if this is done right, this is really going to help a lot of those guys. We don't farm ourselves. We could be somebody that the farmers sell their raw product to. So my name's Christopher Terry. I'm the owner of Finger Lakes Cannabis. You can find us online at flxcbd.com. We produce locally produce CBD products. We have topical salves and sublingual oils. A 200 milligram topical salve contains organic coconut oil. We have one that's 200 milligrams that contains organic coconut oil and raw African shea butter, as well as the CBD. Then we have that same version with the shea butter and the 500 milligram. Then we have 200 milligram oil, sublingual oil. It's very concentrated. We have a 600 milligram version, which contains the same exact oil. It's two, approximately two milligrams per drop. And then we have the 2000 plus milligram, which actually falls into about 2100 to 2200 milligrams. That is extremely concentrated and that comes in to be about seven milligrams per drop. I mean, I've heard of people canceling their surgeries 
due to using CBD products. And people say that they haven't slept in years and got a full, full night's sleep for the first time ever. Uh, we're, we're based out of Montour Falls, but we don't have our, our own brick and mortar shop. We're in a few retail locations. Wrap It Up gift shop up the road here, Stillman's Greenhouse in Montour Falls, Panache out in Corning, and we do the bulk of our sales online. All our oils are produced here. They're very concentrated. We use organic ingredients. The only non-organic ingredient we use is our shea butter, and that's because that's imported directly from Africa and they don't follow the same certifications over there. Try it, try it. It may help you, could change your life. My theme is medicinal flowers. I didn't want to get too much into the herbs even though now I'm taking a Lyme disease seminar course this next week just to help with that. It's really predominant in this area. I'm Lori Tebby from the Southern Tier Lime Support Incorporated and this is Dave Macy. We go around to outreach events and uh, we talk about prevention, our support group and how we help people treat this disease. We are incorporated so we are a not-for-profit and we're based out of Binghamton. We talk about a lot of different products. We talk about permethrin and neem. We talk about uh, insect repellents. We have a disclaimer. Uh, we know we just suggest these items, so we don't really give medical advice. There's different kinds of ticks. They are uh, they're called arachnids. Uh, the black-legged ticks. Uh, they're the same as deer ticks. People think the lone star tick or the dog tick. They don't carry illnesses, but they do. And the lone star tick is actually being found in this area. The tick has a two-year life cycle. It starts as eggs and when they hatch out it's larvae. And that's usually when they have their first feeding on birds and mice and that's when they pick up the most illnesses. Usually in the spring to fall is when you are most likely to get uh, bit by a tick or a nymph. The nymph is the next stage and then the adult stage. So it takes two years for them to get to adult. Everywhere. They're on pets, uh, birds, squirrels, chipmunks, and mice. Uh, they're under leaves in wooded areas. They're in the brush on the beach, in overgrown areas, in shrubs, flower beds. They're on tall and dark or short grasses. Ticks climb to the tips of the grasses and weeds and they lay in wait for their next host to brush against them. This is called questing. They're most active between May and November, but studies have proven that ticks can be found questing all year round at temperatures as low as 38 degrees. Uh, tick removers here. There's the, the CDC doesn't really like this one. It's called the tick twister. They don't really want you to twist it, but sometimes they're the most effective actually. There's also a tick key. And that when you actually hook over a tick and you spin it until it comes out. Yep, this is the tick key. You kind of get it under the mouth part and you lift it up. I don't have the tick lasso technique, but I also have the uh, fine tip tick tweezers. Those are the tweezers you can use. Yeah. That is a, uh, a tick lifter to get under the mouth part uh, right through here where the slit is and then uh, it does have a little magnifying glass. And also I have the ticked off scoop. And we sell, the, uh, we don't have the magnifying glass but we do sell tick removers for our support group. You want to remove ticks promptly and properly. Uh, you don't want to touch the ticks with your bare hands uh, because the infective agents may enter through mucous membranes or breaks in the skin. Uh, you don't want to twist or jerk the tick um, because the mouth parts of the tick may become embedded, increasing the risk of infection. Uh, you don't want to squeeze or crush or puncture the body of the tick, especially after they've had a blood meal. The tick saliva and the gut content may be released, increasing the risk of infection. Don't put alcohol, Vaseline, don't put a match on them. Uh, because the ticks will regurgitate uh, their stomach contents. Uh, it makes them more ag agitated and they're gonna, you're going to get more risk of infection. No matter what you see on Facebook, <laughs> don't put anything That's on them. Yeah. Especially A lot if of people embedded. are you know, yeah. promoting putting peppermint oil or burning them and that's not what you want to do. Yep, get them out Follow first. Protocols yeah. the safest way. Yeah. You want to get close to that mouth part and lift up and wait for them to release. Um, clean the skin area with an antiseptic afterwards. Uh, you can save the tick for testing at testing labs. Uh, we recommend Technology.
and uh, call your doctor and stick the tick on a piece of tape for disposal or take it to your doctor and show them what has been. Symptoms, probably less uh, than 50% of the people have a bullseye rash and sometimes they don't even look like a bullseye. It could be like a solid red mass on your body or it could be several rashes. There are three stages of Lyme disease, early localized, early disseminated and late stage. A lot of the three common symptoms are Bell's palsy where your face is droops, uh, the bullseye rash or the swollen knee which we call Mon the Montauk knee. The bullseye rash, a lot of people don't see them because they're up in their hairline, around their side of their face, uh, on their backs, behind the knees, they don't see them and uh, they, that's why they don't check right away. You don't have to have a bullseye rash to have Lyme disease. Some of the illnesses, co-infections that ticks carry, they don't just carry Borrelia, which is the Lyme disease bacteria. They carry uh, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, Q fever, uh, tularemia. Uh, they also carry uh, the Powassan virus, which is becoming serious. It's very deadly. Um, they also carry Babesiosis, which is a protozoan. It's like a cousin to malaria. And also Bartonella. Kind of had the similar symptoms, a lot of these illnesses, just the achiness, uh, in inflammation, uh, fever. Martinella, you get red streaks. It looks like you have cat scratch fever. You get cherry angi angiomas, that's a sign of Babesia. Uh, the red eyes, it looks like conjunctivitis. We're going to talk about prevention. Um, what you want to put on your skin, eat free. But this is an insect repellent. Uh, you can use neem, neem tree oil. Um, you can use uh, essential oils uh, like rose geranium. I believe this has uh, D in it. This has got uh, sun protection. But for your clothing, you don't want to put this on your skin, but we use permethrin. Wear white or light colored clothing to see the ticks easier. Wear a hat and tuck in your hair if possible. Wear a long sleeve shirt uh, fitted at the wrist. Uh, wear shoes. Uh, we recommend no bare feet or sandals, but especially when you're out gardening or hiking. Um, Wear long pants tucked into your socks um, and remove clothes and put them in the hot dryer on high for 10 minutes when you get home. Stay in the middle of the path when you're walking. Do tick checks immediately when you get back inside. Check behind your ears, the back of your head, uh, behind your knees, in your groin area. Uh, they do uh, the anesthetic to uh, numb the area when they bite you so you don't feel it. People never so, even find the tick, and that tick, you know, latches onto you, stays on for a period of time, and then falls off before you ever knew you had it. So being aware of possible symptoms is super important that you don't have to remember having a tick to have Lyme disease. When you get back home, remove your clothing, put them in the dryer for 10 minutes. Uh, the high heat will kill the ticks. We also recommend uh, doing like a roll, take a roller brush when you go hiking, so you can just keep rolling your body and your clothing. Take a shower so that you can check yourself over when you get back inside. Um, if you find a tick that's unattached, you know, use the lint roller. But if you do find one that's attached, remove it correctly, especially the mouthpiece because the saliva has the bacteria in it. Apply an antiseptic or an essential oil such as tea tree, clove, thyme, oregano, or cinnamon and go to the doctor immediately and demand antibiotics. Not just the two-day course of doxycycline. That will just prevent the rash you need to get at least a month's supply, and if you can get a refill, two months' supply. Save the tick in a Ziploc bag and a moist cotton ball. Um, you can freeze it if you want to test the tick later. You can send it to technology.org, and they'll test for 11 pathogens. Uh, if you get flu-like symptoms or a bullseye rash, uh, take a picture of the rash and find a Lyme literate medical doctor on either LymeDisease.org, ILADS.org, or the Lyme Disease Association.org. Keeping our pets safe, uh, a lot of people recommend Ceresto, the collars. Um, there are some pet repellents that they're finding are causing a lot of neurological damage in their pets. We recommend uh, looking that up. Uh, do tick checks and remove ticks promptly. Uh, give your pet a bath when they come in. Uh, contact your vet for tick testing, treatment options, and other info. the yard. You want to keep your grass mowed short. 
trim tall grass and weeds. I think another important thing for people to realize with their and pets is even if you're not spending a lot of time outside, but you let your dog go outside and then your dog comes back in, you know, your dog was outside running around the weeds and then it comes back in, your dog potentially can bring ticks into your house. Even though you're not spending out time outside, you know, your dog comes in, jumps on your bed and brings ticks into your house that can bite you then. So uh, that's right, Dave, uh, I mean, they're always looking for new hosts. If you can keep your wood piles and your composting piles and your bird feeders away from the house, try to keep the deer out of your yard by planting marigolds to hang bars of soap around like trees to keep deer out. Um, there's tick baits. They're called actually called tick baits. You put them out near your wood piles or near wooden areas. And I also recommend people spraying uh, this product on cotton balls, putting toilet paper tubes around the yard and wood piles. And uh, the mice will take that back to their nest. They, it will kill the ticks in their nests. And the mice are probably where they're getting most of their infections from. If you don't mind poisons and pesticides, uh, you can have a professional come and spray your yard. We have the Southern Tier Lyme Support Group. I found them online and started going to the meetings that are at the Shenango County Office Building in uh, Binghamton, New York, second Monday of every month. And it's a great resource to talk to other people who may be going through the same thing as you. A lot of people don't really understand if they haven't been there. So talking to other people is like just one of the best things you can do. You can find out what protocols other people are doing. Because there's a million different things people are doing to treat Lyme disease. We have a Facebook page that's a Southern Tier Lyme Support Group. And then another page that's Southern Tier Lyme Support Inc. On the group page, it's open discussion, so you can go on there and post questions, recipes and food and anything that they're doing to help fight the disease. You know, you have to hit it from all angles. So that's a great place to talk about those things. And that is the end of our presentation. The socks, we sell those as a fundraiser. Uh, we have youth and adults, and they are $10 for a pair for the children and $12 a pair for adults. And they've been treated uh, with permethrin, and they last 70 washings. We also sell tick removers. Um, they, they just have our little logo as a keychain, and uh, we sell those just as a fundraiser. So we recommend people uh, ordering kits through Igenix, and uh, you can download their order form. And you have to get a doctor to sign the paperwork and then uh, go to a lab, on, uh, like a hospital lab, on a Monday or Tuesday, and they'll ship, they should ship it to California on ice for you. Every year we have a conference at Binghamton University, and we have Bob Jagir from Igenix come and speak. And we also have uh, Dr. Richard Horowitz. He wrote this book, How Can I Get Better? And we usually have him come and speak to the, ever, the first Saturday in May. Next week on Teaching Ithaca Wellness. I'm Will Feudman and I practice Chinese medicine and I'm also a licensed social worker.